Welcome back to another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, we have a Matchbox Lesney number 47. That's a one-ton Trojan van. It's been a few weeks since I put out a restoration video. I've been traveling a lot for my day job and uh, had a little minor surgery um, last month that the recovery's definitely taken me a lot longer than I originally thought I was in for. So uh, I apologize for the, the break and the absence, but I hope to get back into uh, the regular schedule of restorations. Um, I'm actually in the middle of about three or four different restorations at this point in time, but this is the uh, the one that I've been able to finish up and get enough footage of that I could cut together a video. So thanks for uh, being patient and hanging with me. As you can see, this, uh, this model's seen better days. It uh, has very little, if any, of the original paint left on it. Um, it would have originally been branded with the uh, Brook Bond T logo on the outside. And uh, the rear axle on the base looks to be crushed up underneath. Um, I don't know if this got stepped on or if maybe the child that owned it just really wanted that low rider kind of bagged look on it and decided to just force those wheels up underneath but uh, I felt like because of the condition this is in it is a prime candidate for restoration so that's what we're going to do. As with all my restorations the first step is to drill and tap out the post that holds the base to the upper casting. Um, I've tried a lot of different methods of this and I've seen methods done by other restorers um, using a vise or some kind of uh, block to hold uh, the castings and I've found that that's a really good way for me to break drill bits and uh, mess up the center post and so I usually just uh, drill these by hand I found that that gives me the best kind of feel uh, to make sure that I'm not going too deep you can see that I've set the depth on uh, my drill bit in this case uh, just by checking it deeper in the drill to make sure that I don't, I don't go too deep and that I get deep enough to uh, take the screw uh, that we'll, we'll use for the reassembly piece. So go ahead and drill that out. And um, once I've got the center hole drilled, the next step is to remove that flange. Um, I use a really sharp bit for this and I go nice and slow. I don't wanna remove too much just kind of inch my way up to it. A lot of times, even if there's still a slight little flange on the edge, uh, that's good enough for me. Um, I can clean that out, clean it off, and uh, the outside piece usually will uh, flake up. Um, I'd much rather uh, remove too little and be able to come back and file that off than remove too much and end up with a sloppy fit when I go to put it back together. So that base came off pretty easy. Um, you can really see now just how poor shape this base is in. Um, that back piece has really been bent down. And so the, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is see what I can do to straighten this out. So I've started out by just uh, using a little light but firm pressure uh, just with my hands. Uh, again, I prefer to have some feel over it to get uh, most of the bent uh, base back into alignment. Um, a couple of these smaller tabs, I like to use a, a small ball peen hammer um, and again, just gentle light taps over and over uh, in the area that I'm trying to get bent. Um, I'm trying to be really careful because I don't want to uh, change or affect any of the details that are in the casting. But this one appears to have gone back right where it was supposed to be, but now that I'm seeing that kind of all raised up in the air as the original casting was, I'm kind of starting to dig the, uh, the lowrider kind of bagged look that it had when I got the casting. And I'm wondering, if I take my base and I flip it around to the upside down side, um, if that that kind of gives me that sort of bagged look that uh, a lot of the 
uh, new hot rods and resto mods are getting and I'm kind of digging the way that looks so um, we'll have to see as I move forward with this I suppose you know by inverting the base I always have the option of pulling the screw out and flipping it back over to uh, to be an original casting but I'm kind of liking this uh, this low rider look I pulled out one of my uh, mint original copies of this model as kind of a reference for uh, what it's supposed to be. Um, you can see this is a, a little bit darker color red. Uh, it's got the water transfer decals. Let's read Brook Bond T with the little logo of the tea leaf on the door. Um, this particular casting uh, I feel is in really really good shape. Um, it has just a few light spots of uh, play wear, but you know, for the most part, um, this is uh, as close to mint or near mint as I typically get in my collections. Uh, this is a metal wheel model, which is a little bit older, a little bit harder to find. Um, and really the, the main blemish on it, um, you can kind of see here on the bottom, this little rough piece. I believe that's actually where the sprue came off from the original casting. Uh, it's not dirt, it's not something stuck onto it. So um, with all of that considered, um, and being as I have uh, a really nice mint original one-ton Trojan van in my collection, um, I think I want to take this restoration more in a custom direction. Um, I want to stay somewhat true to the original casting, um, but, you know, hot rod it up a bit. So I've gone ahead and removed all of the original paint from the casting. It really didn't take much. Um, I did a quick light spray with my citrus strip paint stripper. Um, here you can see the base. I've already gone ahead with a coat of my flat black. Um, it's just a standard testers flat black paint. Um, and I've gone ahead and painted both sides of the base uh, so that I have the option to use either one in the assembly. Um, in order to mix the paint, I'm going to start out with my little paint mixing cup. Um, the base of this, I'm going to use a Tester's Standard Gloss Red. Um, I like the Tester's paints for, you know, most of these die-cast restos. And to kick it up a little bit, I'm going to add a few drops of this Wicked Color uh, Metallic flake. Um, this is an airbrush only paint or an airbrush use paint. I found that it mixes really well with the testers enamel and um, gives me a really nice result, especially on the, the gloss or transparent colors. And then as always, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, the testers thinner, um, which if you're working with enamel paints, you really have to use the thinner to get it to be uh, flowable and run through your airbrush. Um, when I'm mixing or measuring, I like to use these little pipettes. They give me a little better control than just trying to pour something out of the bottle. Um, and they've got the measurement marks down the tube, and they're disposable when I'm done. So no mess, no fuss, just uh, throw away everything when I'm finished. In order to mix the paints up um, really, really well, I use a little battery-operated I think it's actually a, a frother uh, for making cappuccinos at home but uh, it it's one hell of a paint mixer and it fits in really nice inside the the bottom of my little mixing cups so I'll give that a few whirls and uh, that's looking nice and flowable and I think that will work just fine in my airbrush uh, in order to load my brush I also use a pipette uh, something that I can pull in and uh, you know measure out a set amount. It also means that whatever doesn't fit in my cup or that I don't want to use for my initial spray, it's pretty easy for me to just squirt it back in the cup when I'm done. As always, when I start uh, spraying a casting, um, I want to make sure I get it really good and clean. I wipe it down with some... Uh, some alcohol, uh, something that will make sure my surface is nice and prepped and ready to go for paint. Um, but I do not use any kind of primer. Um, from the research that I've done, I don't think uh, the, the Lesney factory used a primer when they painted them to begin with. 
Um, they did use an enamel paint that was hard and wore well, and so I used the same enamel paints without a uh, primer coat, and I've always gotten really good results. Um, I tend to do a very light tack coat to start, and that's, uh, that's what you're seeing here. Um, I want to get just enough to make sure it sticks well, and I've got smooth, even coverage across the casting. Um, I'll go ahead and do uh, two more coats, a, a second light coat as well as a wetter third coat um, as a final coat. And uh, as you can see, you're starting to pick up a couple of the reflections in, in the metallic flake that I've added to this uh, dark red color. And I think that's going to look really incredible when I get it all finished up. So um, here you can see this is my, uh, my final coat. Uh, the third coat. I, I do put that on a little bit heavier, a little bit wet. Um, you can see there's, it looks like little bubbles or imperfections on the surface. Um, those are actually little pieces of that metallic flake. Um, and so for this particular casting, I will finish it off with a nice couple of coats of uh, heavy gloss clear. So now that the uh, painted castings had overnight to dry and cure, um, you can see the gloss really helps even out any of those uh, uneven spots, those little imperfections. I will still go over this with some uh, polishing compound and a buffing wheel in my Dremel to give it a nice smooth shine. But uh, all in all, I'm very, very pleased with how the uh, body has come out. Um, the base looks great as well, and so before I get to reassembly, I need to turn my attention to the wheels and axles. So as I mentioned before, um, this casting was not in great shape, and these wheels and axles were really, really rough. In fact, uh, the axles were so rusty that um, after I got the uh, first wheel off just so that I could remove it, um, I actually couldn't even move the second wheel. The rust had seized the wheels up around the axle so I put these in a little bit of white vinegar and let them soak overnight and uh, let the uh, the mild acid in the vinegar do its magic so um, with the axles all cleaned up and shiny again and I can reassemble these um, I always look I want to pick the better side of the wheels I want to make sure that if a wheel has a good side that it's facing out um, these are crimped axles, and so when I removed them, uh, all I did was take a pair of needle nose pliers and went opposite to the direction of the crimp, uh, just to take that flat blade on the end of the axle and force it back into more of a square shape. Um, I've got to be really careful when I do that, that I don't go too far with it, but uh, usually it will make the end of the round axle square, um, so it's sort of that square peg round hole conundrum, but it usually gives me enough release uh, and relief on the end there that I can pull the outside wheel off. Um, and so when I reassemble these axles, I'm doing that same step just in reverse. So when I get the wheel placed, I want to look and find which direction the original crimp ran and align my pliers in that same direction. And then just some firm, even pressure, um, a hard squeeze on a small set of pliers uh, is usually all you need. And uh, I tend to kind of inch up on it. I might take two or three squeezes. I don't want to over squeeze. I don't want to over flatten that, um, at least not more than it was originally. And uh, usually, you know, inching up on it, taking a little bit at a time, I'm able to get those axles to recrimp just like they were originally. Um, with very little, if any, evidence that they've been removed at all. Um, so pretty happy with how that turned out. In order to add some details on the base casting, I'm using my uh, silver paint pen. Um, if I do want to go for the lowrider look, I thought it might be kind of nice to customize out the base a little bit, show the, uh, the drive shaft and the axle lines that were molded into the casting and uh, just you know, make it a little bit more interesting. If I'm gonna do a custom, uh, I might as well accent some of those features and show them off a little bit. So pretty happy with uh, the overall color on the base. The, uh, the flat black um, is uh, 
probably not what Lesney used originally. I think all the bases that I have have at least a little bit of a gloss to them, almost an eggshell kind of finish, but uh, for the purposes of this restoration and uh, kind of going in the custom direction, um, I'm happy with the flat black look, and I think it really makes all the little silver details pop. For reassembly, uh, really is fairly straightforward. Um, I like to color match my screws, and that also makes sure that as I paint the model that I don't end up with any paint down in that threaded tapped hole. So um, just remove the screw, um, and again, here I can keep this model original and install that base back exactly as it was. Um, it'll sit a little higher, or I can flip the base around, which is I think what I'm going to do for uh, for now and for the purposes of the video. Um, and I'm going to install that base in reverse. So what that does is it flips the axles, instead of being underneath the casting side, um, up on the top part of the casting side. So it's not much, uh, it's not a significant shift, um, but you know when I look at hot rods, all the ones that tend to be the most beautiful and the, the best done and the best looking ones, they're not the ones that make you know a drastic shift or change in the stance of the vehicle. Sometimes just a little bit is all you really need and uh, I think that's the case with this one. So with my uh, screw reassembled. Uh, now you can kind of start to see exactly what that uh, stance and that ride height is going to be on this. And uh, I am just really pleased with how that's turning out. I do want to uh, add back um, a few more uh, little details on the casting. And to do that, I'm using my Molito chrome pin. Uh, if you haven't used one of these, uh, go ahead and pick one up. They are a little pricey, and uh, they don't tend to last me very long, uh, especially if you go a long time between uses, they tend to dry out. Um, and so I always start out with uh, just making a little puddle, um, getting some of that chrome ink to come out on the casting. Um, I generally just use the bottom of one of my little mixing cups here. Um, but as soon as that ink starts to flow, the, uh, the tip of the pen is, is not the uh, friendliest um, i found to add the, uh, the details and to control um, what we're doing. So I like to use just a, a fine-tipped brush. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put back the uh, headlights, um, the grill, and then uh, I'm going to try something that um, I've wanted to do for a while and that is to accent the edges of the window frames with a little bit of the chrome. And to do that, um, I'm loading up my, my brush with some of the Molito ink, and then um, just gradually and, and ever so slightly running it around the inside frame of the windows. I'm not, um, not painting it all on the exterior of the casting. Um, you don't really need to, and I've, I've found with uh, the scale that these are at, just adding that little bit of shiny chrome on the inside of the frame really gives it the look and the illusion that there is a, a, a chrome trim around the, uh, the windshield and the side windows. And so I'm just slowly working my way around the casting, um, trying to put back in some of those details um, and accent some of the, the little points and features on the original casting. So here we have our completed restoration custom resto mod of the Matchbox Lesney number 47 one ton Trojan van. We've taken this, uh, this old crushed neglected casting from a Brook Bond T company to the Brook Bond Bagger, and uh, I really couldn't be more pleased with uh, with how this little custom turned out. Um, it's really been a lot of fun, and uh, you know, it, I think that uh, making each of these restorations your own is is something kind of fun to do every now and then. You know, I've got uh, I've got a few other um, true original restos 
in the pipeline right now um, working on a builder supply truck that will be absolutely back to the original uh, that it, it left the lesney factory in but um, every now and then when i come across these castings that are uh, prime candidates for restoration and i've already got several mint copies of that casting um, I, I find it kind of fun to uh, to mix it up and do something a little different and um, this casting really gave me the chance to try out a couple of things that I've been wanting to do. Um, lowering a vehicle, doing the uh, the chrome on the window trim, which I, I tell you what, um, for something that's so easy and, and so quick to do, um, it is subtle, but it, it really has a powerful effect on the overall uh, finish and look. Um, you can see I've also hit uh, the door handles and the locks and a couple of the other little raised areas of the casting with the, the the chrome as well and um i'm really pleased with how this turned out so i want to know what you think uh, so leave me your uh your thoughts in the comments below um as always if you enjoyed the video throw us a like and uh give us a uh, subscribe um if you want to stay up to date with uh, this and all of our future restorations um, as always, have a wonderful week and join us next weekend for another vintage diecast restoration.